What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Steve's Project Car Garage. My name is Steve. It's been a few weeks. Uh, a lot has happened in those few weeks, but unfortunately, not a lot of that had to do with the Triumph. In fact, if anything. So uh, today we're going to get back to work on the engine, trying to get this project finished up. I am at the beginning of a long vacation, so fingers crossed we'll be able to go ahead and get this engine finished with the uh, assembly during this week. And maybe not necessarily this video, but during the week. So make sure you go ahead and grab yourself a cup of jitter juice and sit down because it's time to get back to wrenching. All right, so the last video I talked about some part issues and things that I was trying to get hashed out and I showed you the uh, alternator that I'm gonna be installing. Um, and uh, just as a recap, we kind of got stuck with this sprocket being a little bit too too thick. So uh, again, I went ahead and decided to stick with the original sprocket, but I've gone ahead and picked up an IDI, IDMS, I think that is, um, chain so a nice high quality chain that should last for quite a while and not stretch it's a german made chain so uh we're gonna go ahead and get that you know set up and installed here but first we actually got to go ahead and get this front plate sealed um because now that we kind of know the thickness of the gasket that we need we need to get that put on once we get that put on then we can go ahead and start talking about timing the engine getting the chain put on and moving forward from there so let's get back into it all right, so I've got the gasket just kind of loosely on here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a Sharpie. I'm just gonna actually kind of do an outline of where the gasket goes, because I'm gonna paint on some of the, uh, the Permatex uh, Super 300 that I like to use. I'm gonna paint it onto the block, but then I'm also gonna paint it onto the gasket itself. And I just don't want to paint on more than I need because then that can just obviously create a big mess so I'm gonna go ahead and just outline all of this so I know exactly what I need to paint and what I don't need to paint so with that there we go got a nice little outline so let me go ahead and get that applied and then we'll get the other side applied and vice versa and let her rip all right so I got the uh, super 300 I uh, went ahead and I just put some tape on the cam just so I can, you know, in case I somehow miss horribly. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this guy, you know, coated with the Super 300. So, two very boring minutes later. All right, so I got this coated and I got the gasket coated on one side at least. So I'm gonna go ahead now and get this guy on. All right. So I'll put that on there now. So the next thing will be for me to coat the gasket on this side and then also the mounting plate. And then once I've got that done, We'll go ahead and get this guy put on. All right, so we got the gasket on. I got, or I got the former gasket on, the gasket cinch. Got everything coated. So I'm gonna go ahead and marry these two, hopefully for the last time ever. There we go. All right. That looks pretty dang good. So, um, a little bit of cleanup on a couple of the pins here, but uh, outside of that, what we're gonna do next is uh, get the cam retainer plate put on. You can get this tape taken off the cam itself. And then once we get that put on, we can then start putting on the bolts um, that are available because obviously all of these that kind of go around here would be for the timing chain so we can't do that but we'll do the timing uh, i'll do the retainer and then we'll do this center bolt here so that's going to be all three um and then also there's this oil galley uh plug that we'll have to put in uh can't forget that so let me go ahead and get some uh bolts and let's get this rolling all right so I'm going to go ahead and get these tightened down. The uh, torque spec for these is uh, 
18 to 20 foot pounds. Um, I'm going to go with 19 because it's right in the middle. Um, and I'm going to talk about the end float on this. And um, with this camp retainer point, I ended up sanding it a lot to try to get the clearance, which is, uh, was it 40 to 80 thou? And uh, it depends upon how you measure it. So if you measure it with a dial gauge like I was, even from factory, this is super tight. I think that factory, when I pulled this apart, was like one thou. But uh, the guide actually shows you to use a feeler gauge right up in here. And so I kind of split the difference. So I'm at three thou going, or 30 thou rather, going this way. And then I don't remember what the figure was up in here, but I'm going to leave it as that. I'm not going to chase it. But I think what happens is that as you tighten these down, um, it causes the ends to get pulled in and sucked into the block itself, but leaving this middle section kind of floating. And over time, it actually machined the inside of this. And so uh, I shaved it down so that way the machining was gone, um, which makes it pretty flat. So I think even from factory, the end float on these was really kind of just up in the air. Um, but let's get this tightened down and uh, keep carrying on. All right, there we go. Now that's interesting, because right now the cam doesn't want to move. And that's at that correct pressure. That cam is tight, tight, tight. <sighs> this cam retainer plate is going to be the end of me, I swear. All right, well, I'm going to have to back that out and try again, because that should not be tight as it is. And uh, there's no end float on that now. Fantastic. See, right there's that end float, but as soon as I tighten that down, Still have end float there. No end float. That's so weird. Well, let me play with this for a little bit and I'll let you know what I find. All right, so I've gone ahead and flipped the cam retainer plate over. Um, so we'll see if this makes a difference. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, I don't know. Nope. That thing is tight as can be. Why? One hour later. All right, so I got an update. Um, I don't know why I didn't think about this before, but uh, what I just did is I went and I used a little bit of sanding um, right here, right where it was binding on the cam retainer, and it removed just enough material. So now we're at 18 foot pounds. We got nice free movement, and the end play is exactly where I want it to be. So um, I, I don't know why I was overthinking that. I was trying to make the plate flat as possible, but the reality is, is that when you torque down on either end of this, the center part where it's not, you know, retained or held is going to, you know, stay where it is, but these are going to pull in, causing it to be a little warped. So, uh, yeah, I think we're better than factory on that one, because like I said before, when I did this from factory, it was, uh, you know, less than a one foul of, of clearance, so... I think we're pretty good at this point and we should be fine to continue moving forward. So the next thing we got to talk about is timing, timing chain, and timing gears. Um, I'm going to retain the old timing gears like I had mentioned in the past. I have witness marks on the cam timing gear and obviously with the crank timing gear it has you know the woodruff key. So um, yeah let me get this cleaned up a little bit. There's a little bit of schmutz coming out and uh, let's continue. All right, so time to start talking about the uh, the gears. So the gears have little timing marks on them here. 
Here's the original gears. So you can kind of see that little dot there, and then there's going to be a little dot here. And then on the actual engine plate themselves, there's a corresponding dot in the middle. So what I've done is I've taken the camshaft and I've positioned the camshaft so that way it's in alignment with this witness mark here. And this way I can ensure that the camshaft is going, or the, the gear is going to be in the same position as the camshaft when I took it apart. So theoretically the timing on this should be should be easy to do. Now what the manual says is to go ahead and lay down both sprockets on the ground so that way the um, timing marks are pointing at each other, which they are. So we've got, we've got one here and one there. And then they want you to go ahead and lay the chain on. So we're going to do that. Put the chain there. And let's see if I can make this work. Okay, so those two points are pointing at each other. Can I get the chain in? Yes. Okay, so theoretically those are pointing at each other. I should be able to now pick this up and then put it on. So let's see if we can do that and if this worked out or if uh, I have to give it a second shot. We'll, we'll see. All right. I seem to be a tooth off or two. Let's bring this back and try that again. All right, I went ahead and I rotated it just a few teeth. Let's see where that lands us. All right, I still think I am a tooth off. So we'll try one more. There we go. That seems a lot more like it. Excellent. All right. So what I'm going to do, well, I think that maybe the cam, cam needs to rotate a little. Let me throw the screws in real quick. I got the new locking plate. And just for grins, see how that lines up. That actually lines up good. Mark here going to here, mark here going to there. I think we're all right. So I'm going to tighten this down and I'm not going to drive it home yet. I'm going to check the remainder of the alignment, but I think that that's pretty decent. Let me look into this a bit more and I'll check back in with you. All right. So one thing I forgot to do in my, my haste was to go ahead and install the Woodruff key. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. But I'll have to probably get a little something to just to tap it in because it is a very, very tight fit. Excellent. All right, now I was able to get that on. Um, I just ended up using my little lead-faced mallet here, and uh, I just lightly tapped this on uh, with the Woodruff key in place. So now we got the sprockets lined up. We got dot pointing here, dot pointing there. We should be in good nick based upon the way that, that looks. So I'm going to go ahead and now put those bolts on in. I'm not going to um, fix the uh, or bend the tabs on this quite yet until I'm 100% certain that everything's good. But I think that that's a pretty good start. 
All right, so let me show you what I was talking about with those timing marks. So you can see here, there's the timing mark on the uh, crankshaft, and there's the mark on the plate, and then here's the mark on the cam gear. So everything does look pretty good. Um, this is the uh, IWIS chain that I was talking about. I'm sure I probably called it something earlier that was not right, but that's, that's, that's where we're at. I'm pretty happy with this. So I think that we're gonna go ahead and press pause here and get this video on out. And I got five more days, six more days of vacation. So let's see what we can get going. Let me wrap up this video though. All right, well, that does it. So um, sorry for the long delay and getting another video posted on out to you guys, but you know, life's gotten in the way and well, life happens, honestly. So it's quite all right. But anyways, I'm gonna try to actually get two, maybe even three videos out this week. Fingers crossed, we'll see. But if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, click the bell to get those post notifications. And remember, when working on project cars like this, Take a little bit of information from each manual and don't be that dreaded previous owner. Cheers.